Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Montana is a state that has rich natural resources. Uh, we say that we're a state where we work, where we also like to play. And as Montanans, I think we understand that balance we need to have, where we want to have a place we can develop our natural resources, we can have a thriving agriculture business. At the same time, we want to make sure we protect our environment so we have a place to take our kids fishing and hunting and backpacking on the weekends. And that's who we are as Montanans. I'm an avid outdoorsman. Love spending time uh, outside when I'm not here in Washington, D.C. And we've found in Montana that balance. Uh, and we struck that with the hard work and the encouragement of farmers, ranchers, uh, folks from the energy um, industry, from conservationists, to put together a state plan in terms of sage-grouse conservation. And in Montana, sage-grouse habitat is predominantly occupied uh, by private landowners. 64% of the sage-grouse habitat in Montana is in the hands of, uh, of the private citizens. And in Montana, we have a checkerboard uh, land management structure, typically by sections, square miles, 640 acres. Federal tracts are oftentimes surrounded by state and private lands. And these federal requirements can have a significant impact on operations on the adjacent private or uh, state lands. And I was disappointed, I must say, to see that, um, that the plan put together by BLM, it uh, rather than complementing what was done with our state plans in Montana, there was conflict. I was disappointed to see the federal plans largely inconsistent with the state plans in some very important areas. And remember, the birds don't know the difference between a BLM section, a private section, or a state section. And this is just another example of this long list of one-size-fits-none directives coming out of this town that don't take into account the unique nature of the states and their ability to provide homegrown solutions. I'm a firm believer that the folks closest to the lands ought to have the greatest voice in this process. Uh, Mr. Lyons, after reading Governor Bullock's consistency review, and, and we have a, a, a Democratic governor, so this, this is a very bipartisan issue back home. Governor Bullock's plan, and, he, and listen to input from Montanans, could you explain why it appears that the voices of Montanans were not incorporated into the planning process? Well, Senator, I would suggest that um, we did try to incorporate the views and concerns of the governor and others in Montana in, in developing the plan, and we will continue to do so through implementation. I'd point out that um, the checkerboard ownership pattern that you described is an important element here. And, and for that reason, um, we sought to build flexibility into the plans with regard to, in particular, how oil and gas resources were to be developed and, uh, and reached agreement with, uh, with the governor's office in that regard. Montana is in a unique situation in that it is transitioning to um, adopting a strategy known as the core area strategy, which is uh, essentially what has been implemented in Wyoming. So um, we're working uh, and will continue to work with the governor's office as that transition occurs. And I think that will provide additional flexibility for the state. Yeah, and, and, and we, um, in that regard, thank you. And I, um, I recognize, and the credit of our state BLM office, uh, they fought hard for clauses in Montana's RMP to ensure that flexibility you mm -hmm. talked about for the federal plans to be reviewed every two years and amended if and when the Montana state plan is proven to be quote effective. Correct. Uh, I think the land users back home in Montana need more certainty that the BLM will indeed amend its land use plans to reflect the successes of local landowners and our state plan. We've been undertaking an active sage grouse conservation for over 10 years. And the irony here, of course, is you know the Montana plan is extremely similar to the Wyoming plan, which was largely adopted by the BLM in Wyoming and not so in Montana. So as I understand, the BLM is undergoing its guidance documents to implement these plans. How does the, the department plan to resolve these differences on federal land within these first two years? Well, I believe what we'll attempt to do is we'll implement the plan as it's written now and as, as the state develops its, um, its plan um, based on the core era strategy, we'll review that plan and then, and then amend the existing uh, RMPs accordingly. So, so specifically, does the department plan to revise its plans in Montana in 2017? I, I think that's a function of when the plans are presented by the state of Montana and it, 
and um, and it's a function of, of the construction of those plans. So I, I, I can't commit to something I haven't seen nor has been delivered. So I think that's why we built this transition in recognizing the desire to put in place this core area strategy, which I think would work well for Montana. And a follow-up on that, uh, they say that if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it in terms of clear objectives and targets. Could you define what you mean by effective and what, quote, meeting management objectives mean so that Montanans have a target to work with? Um, well, effective uh, it means effective in, in sustaining uh, the uh, the, the habitat and the population of greater sage grouse so as to ensure that it uh, does not warrant uh, listing in the future. I think that's the objective across the range. It's actually the objective that was created by the Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies um, over a decade ago, and we've consistently focused on that as an objective in working with the states. All right, I'm out of time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.